Okay, good evening everybody. Today um, today's class topic we are going to discuss the parsha in the name of my father how to put the merits of the past to use. That's the topic of tonight. We are on Parshas Bechu Kotai. This is the last portion in the third of the five books of Moses, known as the Chumash from the word Chamesh. And this is the Parsha which concludes the book of Leviticus, Sefer Vayikra, three out of five. We are getting ready closer to Rosh Hashanah, to Yom Kippur, etc. The parsha begins Pasha Bechukoisai on page 708. It's not a long parsha. It is a, actually a short parsha. Only 78 verses. Hello, Mrs. Man, Mrs. Lees. Good to see you. And the parsha begins if in Bechukoisai Telechu, if you follow my decrees and observe my commandments, there is a list of beautiful brachot, beautiful blessings that Hashem promises, rain and the destruction, the removal of, 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 of bad animals and being um, relieved from our enemies. Wonderful, wonderful brachot. But then verse 14, Starts, Ve'im lo tishmeuli. But if you will not listen to me, Ve'lo ta'asu et kol ha-mitzvot ha'ilu. And if you will not perform all those commandments, Ve'im bechukotai tim'asu. Ve'im et mishpotai tigal nafshechem. And if you are going to ignore, you are going to be perhaps disgusted with my commandments, Ooh, ah, there starts a list. As they call it, Aganza Megillah. A full, long list of that which we call the Klolis. The curse, the admin, admin, uh, uh, admonishment, the view, which begins on verse 16, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, all the way till... Verse 47, 44. Right? Because if you look at verse 43, what does it say? The land will be the raft of them. Right? And the verse concludes. The reason is, Ya'an ube Ya'an, Mishpatai mo'asu, Vet chukotai ga'ala nafsham. Because they were revolted by my ordinances and because their spirit rejected my decrees. So all this is going to happen. Terrible things, which many of them even, those who are into uh, find the historical relevance to the ancient wisdom of the Torah, already were able to somehow figure out the map, the historical map, at certain verses were materialized in our past history of the last 3,000 years. Then verse 44 comes and says, but the Afghan Zod, but despite all this, you are going to be away from your land. Despite all this, the Yoisom Be'eret Seiveyem, while they will be in the land of their enemies, which is exile, God promises, Loi me'astim, veloi ge'altim, lechaloisom, lehofer brisi itam. I would not have been revolted by them, nor would I have rejected them to, a, a, to, a, 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 to obliterate them, to annul my covenant with them. No. 
I'm keeping my covenant. Ani Hashem Eloikechem. I'm Yisrael Chai. But there is a very long, difficult list which is being discussed in the parsha. And here comes an interesting verse in the middle of the admonishment. Verse 42. What does verse 42 say? Right here, you have a spot. But you, you have to behave. This is not a corner. <laughs> no I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to, to, to check on you. Verse 42 says, The Zoharti is Brisi Yaakov. I will remember my covenant with Jacob. The Af is Brisi Yitzchak. And also my covenant with Isaac. The Af is Brisi Avram Esker. And also my covenant with Abraham, I will remember. They are all its Esquire, and I will remember the land. <coughs> this verse, is it a part of the admonishment? Is it a part of the comforting information that I'm going to remember? What is this verse, and how does this verse come in Seemingly, like an emphasized by reading verse 43 and verse 44, that till the end of verse 43, we are still in the midst of the admonishment. Right? That's what the verse says. And it even says, the reason I'm giving you all you that is because you were... Disobeying, disobeying my commandments. But verse 42 seemingly is actually words of, of comfort. You know what? Whatever will happen, I will remember my covenant with you, forefathers of Jacob, Isaac, and Avram. So then it doesn't fit in the order of the chapter. Then it doesn't belong there. Question number one. Question number two. How do you spell Yaakov in Hebrew? Yud, Ayan, Kuf, Bet. Yaakov. Now take a look on the fourth word on this verse and see how the name Yaakov is spelled. Bezoharti, Ebriti, Yaakov. From a name of four letters, it became a name of five letters. Yud, Ayan, Kuf, Vav, Beis. Never in the Chumash is Yaakov's name written with a Vav. If you go back to the story of the original Yaakov in the book of Bereshis, here there's plenty of Chumash in here. It's okay. Thank you. Are you bothering him? What do you mean? It's okay. <laughs> so five places is written with the book, so what's the sum? Okay. It's definitely not by coincidence that here in our Pasik the name Yaakov is spelled with a vav, Yaakov. And the question is. Why is it Yaakov Mitavov? Oh. So I am not an expert in the entire Torah, but Mrs. Kamikar seemingly is. No, but I I'm only know reading, it. I'm just reading the bottom yeah, of the page. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I thought that you were an expert. Okay. I am, no, 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 no. I okay. Near so in that song. case, we're on the same page. Yes. Very good. <laughs> so, very good. Very good. <laughs> I was afraid that I'm teaching great scholars. And, I'm the, and I don't deserve to sit here in the front. So now I'm on the same page, so let's, let's keep the class going. So when it comes to Rashi, Rashi was an expert, tells us, you know, the dead name Yaakov with a Vav, you're going to find in the entire Torah, which means also in the Tanakh, in five times, four other times, you're going to find Yaakov with a Vav. <coughs> and Rashi tells us a story. What's the story? There is another great guy in the 
Bible, with the name of Eliyahu. We all know him as Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu Anobi. How do you spell Eliyahu? Aleph, Lamed, Yud, Hey, Va. Eliyahu. Eliyahu Anobi. That Eliyahu, said Rashi, you're going to find five times in the entire Torah, Tanakh, spelled with Ad Avav, like Elia. With Ad Avav in the end. So what happened? Yaakov went and he took the letter Vav from Eliyahu. And he took it five times away from him. And he keeps it as a collateral that when Eliyahu is going to ask for his vav, Yaakov tells him, you have a job. Your job is to usher in the redemption, the geula, the vasera geula. Like the prophet says, Hinei anochi sholeach lachem et Eliyahu anavi lifnei bo yom Hashem agadol vanora. He is the one who is going to broadcast to deliver the great news that Mashiach is coming. That's the job of Eliyahu Navi. The Mishnah tells us he's going to be sitting there and organizing the process of the redemption. But he might get a little lazy. Or he might decide, yeah, it's not today, maybe tomorrow. So Yaakov, who is our father, holds down to the letter Vav of Eliyahu. And he says, Eliyahu, you want to get your letter Vav back? You better come and do your job. <coughs> so the Rashi brings us, which is, by the way, this from the Medrash, that there is five times, only five, five. that Yaakov is mentioned with Vav. There is five times and only five that Eliyahu is written in the Torah with Adavav. So you should know that this is not by coincidence, this is not a misprint. It was Yaakov who took away the Vav from Eliyahu, and that's why right here in the Torah, you're going to find the first time his name, Yaakov, mentioned Mitavav. So then the question is, what's the letter Vav? Why didn't he take away the Aleph, Chveis, take away the... the the, there's many letters in the word Eliyahu. Why did we take away necessarily the letter of Vav? That's another question. The second question is, if we are concerned about Yaakov, about Eliyahu Anovi not doing his job, in that case, where was Abraham? Why didn't Abraham take away a letter from Eliyahu's name? Why didn't Yitzchak take away a letter from Eliyahu's name? Why necessarily Yaakov is the one who realizes that he needs to keep a collateral of Elijah by taking away a letter from his name? And the Torah is making and heading a buff to his name? Abraham and Yitzchak were also our forefathers, and they should have also be concerned about what's going to happen with Eliyahu and Novi uh, doing the job or not. But if you took the back, I mean, the thing about the Vav is it could be used as the or it could be different. Though. But if you can't put the Vav in Abram or Yitzchak because you'll change the pronunciation. Right, you can call it Yitzchak. Yeah, but it's not the same, but with Eliyahu so, so and That's Eliyahu called a technical or, issue. Yeah, okay. okay. The name is... So you have a technical I issue. I wouldn't mind Avram should be called Vav. And you know what? Eliyahu doesn't only have a Vav. He has other letters in his name. And what is that they're going to put the Lamed from Eliyahu, added to Avram, and he's going to be called Avramel. But that changes total pronunciation. Avramel is not pronunciation. Avramel, every Avram is an Avramel. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Right? In Yiddish, they call him Avramel. <laughs> okay? What's wrong with that? Or put the lamed by Yitzchak and call him Yitzchakol. <laughs> That's how every mother calls the son Yitzchak. I mean, why is it Dafka? Why do you take away? Why is it Yaakov who is the one? You want to give an answer for Yaakov? I'll give an answer that I think Yaakov. I'm not doing any questions. 
Yaakov's children were the only children that all became followed Judaism and followed the Hebrew. Avram and Yitzchak. Which footnote is that? Both had. Which footnote did you see that? It's not in this book. It's other readings that. Not the footnote. <laughs> that okay. had children that didn't follow. Okay, he said another footnote in another book. I'm going to share it soon. Okay, it must be right. I want to know if you thought about it. There's a footnote. It was a footnote. I'm, I'm just taking myself. I'm not taking myself. <laughs> Even though I'm related to Rashi, he didn't have that on there. Okay, very good. <laughs> Okay, so we will come to David Schneider's um, um, footnote not soon. But the question is still, why Yaakov, why Vav? The question is further, why five times? What's, what's the five times? If you want to take away a letter from Yaakov, fire from Eliyahu, because you want to make sure that Eliyahu remembers that he has to take us out of Golos if he wants to get his Vav back. <laughs> In that case, take it once, take it twice. Was it the five? Doesn't he do the number? I think he has to do the numbers. Five is a number. Oh, the math is. Special number like seven. Right. Well, five, yeah, five. Question number five. I don't remember how many questions. Somebody counting the questions. <laughs> I don't know. But the next question is, if question number one is, how does this verse come in here all together? If it's a verse of comfort, seemingly we are discussing admonishment. Question number two is, why is Yaakov with above? So we gave the reason, and the question is, why is Yaakov taking the wolf and Eli out? Why the letter above necessarily? And why five times? Question number five. There was four. There was already four questions. I go over it again. Question number one, why is the verse mentioned here in the middle? Question number two, why is Yaakov the one who's taking the name, not Avram and Yitzchak? Question number three, why is that the letter of Vav necessarily? Question number four, why is it five times the letter of Vav? <coughs> what does it want in Eliyahu and Novi altogether? But anyways, it's also a question. Is Eliyahu and Novi deciding when he wants to bring Mashiach or not? If you even read whatever happens in this week's Pasha, and you see that it has to do with our repentance, if you just turn one verse earlier, go back one page earlier, verse 41, the last few words of the verse, and I will bring them into the land of their enemies, perhaps, oi oz, perhaps then, their unfeeling heart will be humbled. And then they will gain appeasement for their sin. So when does one get appeasement for his sin? When does one get atonement for his sin? When you do tshuva. Who cares? Eliyahu Novi is, is, is the one who makes the decision. You're going to take away the vav. So you're going to pressure them and say, come on, if you want to get involved back, you better get your act together. If you're not doing tshuva, God is not ready to give you anything. He, we have to do tshuva. God has to decide to accept our tshuva. And then, lo and behold, Why is that to do with the Yohanov? Question number six. Who was first among the patriarchs? Abraham. And who was second? Israel. And who was third? Yeah. Okay, now read the verse. Bezacharti and Brisi Yaakov. I'm going to remember the covenant with Yaakov. Ve'af and Brisi Yitzchak. And then the covenant with Yitzchak. Ve'af and Brisi Avram. And now we'll remember the covenant with Avram. Hello? Why are you going backwards? Pink Faket. Pink Faket? <laughs> what are you going backwards? There was Avram. And after Avram, there was a Yitzchak. And after a Yitzchak, there was a Yaakov. And that's how it always works. If you go back, even in the story of the Jews calling to God in Egypt. Turn a second to page 300. Look on page 300. Which, by the way, that story also tells you when does God remember. 
Take a look. On page 300, verse 23. During those many days, it happened that the king of Egypt died. By Yom Hashemelech Mitzrayim. By Yon Chukni Yisrael ben Avoida. By Yisoku. And the children of Israel groaned because of their work. And they cried out. Their outcry because of the work went up to God. Guy heard their moaning. So what happened then? He heard their moaning. So what happened? And God remembered his covenant. Who did he remember? Abraham. That's Yitzchak. That's Yaakov. As they, it's normal. Mm -hmm. He remembered Avram. He remembered Yitzchak. He remembered Yaakov. Suddenly it comes here. Oh, we got to go backwards. Yaakov, Yitzchak, Avram. If we would not have that verse in the story of Mitzrayim, so then maybe it would be a, a small question. But the fact that you see already the way God works, that in order to get us out of our conditions, it works by remembering who we come from and the covenant that he has with us. So what is it that he remembers Yaakov, Yitzhak, and Avram and not in their chronological order of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov? Question number seven. Oops. You're tired? No, no, oh, no. Okay. Just just Take a look. <laughs> Verse 42 again, by, in our parasha. The Zohaiti et Brisi Yaakov. I will remember my covenant with Jacob. So what does God say about Jacob? What am I going to do? He specifically says, I will remember. When is remembrance needed? When do you need to remember something? If it's not around, you forget. He, not only will you forget. If something is not here, you want to talk about something what happened last week. Arnold, you remember what happened in Mexico? You remember? <laughs> right? But that's what remembering means. Remembering means that it's not here. So some, somehow, there is a lack. The patriarchs are not here. And we need them for our credit. So God says, there's a hearty in Brite Yaakov. I'm going to remember. Meaning, even the other one, I'm going to remember. The Af is Brite Yitzchak. What does that say? And also my covenant with Isaac. What is also? What's going to be with Isaac? I'm also going to what? Remember. 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 But it doesn't say they would remember. No. Comes to the next one. So Avram. Ve'afes brisi Avram. And my covenant with Avram. What's going to happen? Esquire. I will remember. They are orets in the land. What's going to happen? Esquire. Remember. You have one time Esquire by Yaakov. One time he scored by Avram. One time he scored by the land. What happens to Yitzchak? No remembrance. Hello. If you want to generalize the old remembrance into one paragraph, so that's how you write. The Zaharti, I will remember. It breathed in my covenant. Yaakov, Yitzchak, Avram, the Yaretz. So. But somehow you decide to specify one <coughs> remembrance for each individual. But if you look it up, suddenly you realize you're missing one. Avram gets a remembrance, Yaakov gets a remembrance, the land gets a remembrance, and Yitzchak doesn't get. So what does the footnote say? There has to be a footnote, no? Oh, there's no footnote here. <laughs> Oh, the footnote forgot. Because Rashi does say it. Okay. <coughs> Rashi says that Yitzchak does not. Rashi says, does he read Rashi? Rashi says, Why doesn't he say they would not remember him by Yitzchak? Says Rashi, Yitzchak doesn't have to remember. Yitzchak is always around. Yeah. Yitzchak is not to be remembered. Yitzchak is here. How is he here? Says Rashi. Oh, you're gonna like that. Remember Yitzchak was put on the altar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Was it slaughtered? Nope. What? Yes, he was. No. Yes. What? Not him, but it was something to, to substitute him. What is that? The ram. The ram. The ram. So that ram, everything that happened to the ram, Avram said, this has to happen to Yitzchak, now it's to the ram, right? So the, Yitzchak, the ram became a, a, an identical copy of what had to happen to Yitzchak. What happened to the ashes of that ram? It remained on the altar. It says, Rashi, you know why it doesn't say, I remember Yitzchak? Because the ashes of Yitzchak is still displayed on the altar, I see it, I don't need a remembrance of it. Like we said before, what does a remembrance mean? I remember something which is not here, either because I forgot about or I just, that's the way we refer to something which is not apparent to our eyes. But Yitzchak, says Rashi, no, Yitzchak is pesedo. Yitzchak is, is always here. God doesn't have to remember Yitzchak. That doesn't have to remember Yitzchak. So you're telling me that there is no remembrance for Yitzchak? So let me tell you, it's not true. Divide it into three sections, into three segments. Malchuyot, Zichronot, Shofarot. We read verses which talks about God being a Melech, verses in Torah, verses in Yitzchak. Then we read a whole bunch of verses which talks about how God remembers. God remembered Noah, and God remembered him, and God remembered this, right? And then we have verses which talks about God being the king. Hashem Melech, Aleluka. This is the, the, this is the order of the Musaf prayer. What is the last verse, the last words that we say on Rosh Hashanah, as we finish the paragraph of remembrance, it reads, Ve'akedas Yitzchok lezah ho'yayoh Ve'en merachamim tizkoyo Boruch ato Hashem Lo'yichem avris That's it. We read the remembrance. We read the old paragraph. Right? You remember this, you remember this. And then, what do we say? Ve'akedas Yitzchok And the binding of Isaac for his descendants Remember in mercy, lest the you Hashem who remembers the covenant. So we are asking to remember the story of Isaac. <laughs> who says that we don't remember? Matter of fact, those who say Tachnun on Mondays and Thursdays, we speak about, we also ask Hashem to remember. But in the Torah, his, his, his name is not associated with remembrance, and as Rashi explained, what is the significance of that? So I think that we spend enough time of questions. And now we should try to get in a little to an explanation of what's going on here and trying to understand what really is happening here. So let's establish a few things. First of all, in, in, the, in the reading of this verse, the Zaharti, where that was our first question, that seemingly that verse is coming in still as a part of the admonishment, turn three verses earlier. And verse 40. Verse 40. Let's read even verse 39. After so many bad things are going to happen, it says, Vanishorim bochemi maku be'avinom. Because of their inequity, you remain, your, your remnant will disintegrate in the lands of your enemies, and because the inequities of their forefathers, Tzudas, verse 40, then they will confess their sin, and the sin of their forefathers. They didn't behave. They betrayed me. They are going to confess it. After all this is going to happen, they are going to confess. No. You look good. What's wrong? You confess. You do tshuva. 
Once you do tshuva, seemingly everything is fine. Comes the next verse, verse 42. And I will remember the covenant in Jacob and, my, and, and Isaac and Avram. Who needs the covenant? Everything is good. They did tshuva. They confessed their sin. So why do you need to remember? We already established our credit. Right? We already established our own right, our own relationship. We confess. You are about children. Everything should be good. The answer is simple. They only confess because of what? Why did they confess? They were because they were suffering. So their children was not sincerely motivated because they realized they made a mistake. You got a good patch. You got a good zet. And you respond this. Okay. I think that uh, I should better... I should better... Uh, I said, well, make up with him. He's not, he's too strong for me. That's what happens. That's what the confession is. So he, that confession is not a sincere confession. It's not. And all the commentaries are saying it. If you look in the Rahima Kodesh, the Kliyokor, they all say it, that this is actually a part of the issue. That the confession is not sincere. They even discuss how worth it is it. They're trying to make some sense of that type of confession when in your heart you didn't really resolve the regret of what you did wrong. And this is what the commentators get into a long discussion. But the bottom line is, you confess, which is a result of pressure. That's not enough to keep us going. God wants to ensure that we have some credit which allows us to be and to exist and to function and to give ourselves an opportunity to start over. If we didn't do real children, where is it going to come from? Hashem comes and says, you know what? I understand. The tshuva is not so sincere. But the covenant which I had established with your ancestors, that is solid. This is strong. This I'm going to keep. This is nothing I can remove. This is priceless. For the heart is Brisi Yaakov. This is something which I'm going to remember. But if it's so great, so why are you putting it as a part of the admonishment? For then it should be a word of comfort, right? A word of credit. Comes the Holy Shilaka, Kadesh, which I told to you, I, I mentioned it to you a few times already. This is the book that the Alpha Lebe said that the Tani is based on his writings, the Pshaya Levi Hurwitz. And you know what he says? Ay, 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 but he says, so gishmak, so sweet. Only the Shiloh can say it. <laughs> Listen to what he says. There's a hearty at Brisi Yaakov. Yes, I'm, I'm getting a little younger here. He said, they used to, used to make print with nice letters. I don't know what happened to the latest prints. Everything is becoming so small. There's a he says. Kasha, I have a question. This verse, is a verse of comfort. But he still didn't finish the curses. Why is the Torah bringing a verse of comfort while you're still seemingly among the curses? So he says, the Kibalti. Kibalti means I received by tradition. He doesn't tell us who told it to him, whether it was a Malach or a Rabbi or a Talmud or a student. He says, Kibalti. The Holy Shiloh says, that's what I received. He says, Ki av zea pasuk hu mitochachat musar. This is a part of God's admonishment. You think it's credit? In the credit lies a good shtach. A good, you know, shtach is? A good dig. dig. What does God tell us? Not dig, punch. More than a punch, more than a dig. You know what he says? God tells us, look who your father was. Shame on you. If you wouldn't have ever father like Avram or like Yitzhak and Yaakov, Mela, what can we do with you? Never. No one changed, no one taught you, no one changed you, no one raised you, no one was, you never had a role model. But you, if you had a father like Yaakov, if you had a father like Yitzhak and like Avram, shame on you. 
כי אין אי דוימה רשע בן רשע חוטא לרשע בן צדיק. You can't compare the sins of a Russia, the son of a Russia, to the Russia, the son of a Tzadik. Ki a Rasha ben a Tzadik, on Shom Eruba, his consequences are much greater. Sheraavim, mitnaeg bechasidud. You saw how a man is supposed to look like. You did see. A Zayda, a Rabba, a Yid. You saw. You weren't, didn't grow up in the Hvezel's Dort in the... In, in Bellevue, Washington, you saw real people. <laughs> you don't follow your ancestors' way of life? God says, I'm going to remember, this is going to stand against you. Even when the verse ends up, in the land I will remember, says the Holy Shiloh, I placed you in a land which the heir of the land should have made you wiser and hold, and hold you back from sin. And nevertheless, you didn't follow. Ah, that's the word. So he says, what does he say? That yes, in one end, like we said before, that the posse comes and tells you, that listen, I'm trying to keep you alive, and the way I'm trying to keep you alive, I can't rely on your confession. I also have to bring in the credit, the fact that you had great ancestors, and I made a covenant with them. But where is the verse placed while I'm still admonishing you? Because at the same time, I'm giving you the carrot in one end, but a stick in the other end, and I say, hello, that's what I'm using for you as credit, is actually at the same time standing against you as a as an excuser an, an, as an accusation. Boobies too. Who are you with parents like this? Oh, there's actually a Gemara. The Gemara tells us in Tractor Chavez. You know the story with the tough on the forest. The what? Oh, I told you you ain't got enough. You're gonna the learn. The tough. The tough, mothers. You know that there's a verse. Oy, ta -ta 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 -ta. <laughs> there is a verse in Ezekiel. God speaks to some angels, and he tells them, "This is the verse: Zokain, Bachur, Psulo, Tav, Noshim." This is Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 6. He says, Ta'agu lemashis. God says you should kill orderly the old man, the young man, and the maiden, children and women. But, ve'al kol ish, asher olav tov, but anyone who has the tov, al tigoshu, don't come near him. Who is the kol ish asher olav atov? What's the tov? There were people who walked around with the leather tov on their forehead, and Hashem commanded the angels to spare the righteous, but He tells them the way He's going to spare them is that they're going to have a leather tov on their forehead. Tov, not leather tov. T. He is tough, but he is tough. It's a verse. Huh? The last letter of the alphabet. Yeah. That's what it says. They're going to have a letter tough. Frag the Gimara. Maishna tough. Frag the Gimara. So the Gimara asks. Track the Chavez, page 55. What is unique about the letter tough that God chose there to be the mark on the forehead of the righteous? Lama, why tough? Rache. Very good, David. Very good. You see, you're, gonna, you're, saying, you're saying, saying a bunch of things, eventually you can say something special. <laughs> Keep on talking. Don't hold back. It's very good. The Gemara gives five reasons why tough. So the Gemara, tough. Tichye. The letter tough. Is the initial of the word tichyeh. You're going to live. 
or Tamut, you will die. So you can have the leather top, which means Tichia, lie, fine. I don't want to go into this Gemara, I know that, you, that this is interesting, but I want to come to the point of this of our discussion. Shmuel Omar, Shmuel says, the letter Tov represents Tama Schus Aves. Tama. Tama means expired. What expired? The merit of the patriarchs as expired. Oh. Meaning, everybody was saved till now, God tells Ezekiel, from all kinds of divine retribution, by the merit of what? Tough. By the merit of others, no, by the no, merit no, of our no, patriarchs. No, no. Jews were saved from divine retribution no. by the merit of the patriarchs. Avram, Mitzchak, and Yaakov. Comes this Cheskel's times, Ezekiel's times, the merit has been expired. That's it. Can no longer save them. And that's what leather tough means. Tama. Tama means expiration. What expired? To salvage. Comes Tosfos. And Tosfos says a very strong question on the Gemara. Tosfos is the commentary outside. This was from Rashi's time. And I don't understand. In Ezekiel's times, the credit of the patriarch has expired. How is it possible? You know that every day, that verse that we just read, I will remember the covenant of Jacob and remember Isaac and, and Isaac and remember we say it in our prayers every morning, not on Shabbat. But during the week we say it. We say it every morning before the army. If it expired, why are you reading it? And that verse is long gone. From Ezekiel's time till today, from 2,000 years. So Tosfos has a question, how, this is what they said, raises the question, if the merit of the patriarchs expired, why did we still invoke in our prayers? Why do we still mention them? It's Tosfos. Tosfos says, the answer is, even though the merit of the patriarchs has expired, the covenant that Hashem made with them is not. Meaning to say there is two things. There is what our patriarchs had accomplished in their work. And they collected a lot of credit. That serves, served us until Ezekiel's day. Two thousand years, they left. God took over the future because they remembered what they did, right? Mm -hmm. Like we read before, and many other things happened. Now we have something else, not their accomplishments, but who they were as a people. God met Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, but each one individually, He made a covenant that I'm going to stay strong with you and your descendants who will come after you. You remember those verses. This is not their action. This is with them, regardless of who we are. The fact that you are the three men who decided to follow my way, this is what I'm establishing, an eternal covenant, never to be expired, never to be broken. And that is what we mention every day in our davening. The very fact that we are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. First, there is the merit of the, the credit of their work, and there is the credit of who they were as a people. This is called the covenant. So what we see of here so far is that we have a covenant. The covenant is wonderful, but at the same time demanding. Demanding in a way by saying, where are you? Was Vistu? Look who your ancestors were. But at the same time, when God demands from us, he's trying to make it easier. He's a loving father. So if you tell me that my father was Abram, this is too much. Abram was the one who went in the fire. Jacob was never in fire. Abram was in fire. 
for the sake of that. Avram was the first one. He had no raw money, like David said before, from the footnote, that Yaakov had someone who he came from. No, he didn't say that point. Yaakov <laughs> came from Yitzchak. He had a tata. And he had a zeda. He had a grandfather. So he grew up to be Yaakov. But Avram had no one to look after. Yitzchak was on the binding point. And the Torah starts by saying, and I remember, which means you should remember who your tata was. Who was my tata? Yaakov. And called Yitzchak. And even more, Avram. Basically, he's going from smaller to bigger. This is according to Rash. He's going from smaller to bigger. Not only Yaakov, if you need Yaakov, but I will also remember even Yitzchak. And even Avram, if needed. Or, like other commentaries say, and that what David mentioned before, who is mainly concerned with us being in exile is Yaakov. Yaakov was the father of the 12 tribes, which is responsible for all of us being who we are. So obviously by going and reminding us the covenant with our fathers, it goes back and also by telling, I'm taking you out of Gullus, who is the one who is more concerned about us being in Gullus? Yeah. Yaakov. That's why, who is the one who is trying to get the letter from Eliyahu and Navi? It's Yaakov. Because it is his kids who came down to Mitzrayim. It is his kids who came down to Egypt and from there continued into Golos. And he, he needs to take responsibility for them. We are Yaakov's kids. It takes the five times the letter of Vav. If you remember, the story from Amalek, when Amalek was fighting against the Jewish people, <coughs> something very strange happened here, very difficult to understand, but that's what the verse said. The verse says that from that time on, God's name, who has four letters, Yud, K, and Vav, K, became covered, right? Became covered became hidden. Two of these letters became hidden, and we only have two of them which is functioning. The letter of Vavke was hidden. This is the end of Pashat B'Shalach. Right? There's a case, there's a case, there's a cover on the Yudke, and the, um, the Yudke which remains intact, but the Vav and He is separated, so to speak. And we have a job. What is our job? Our job in life is to unify the youth came in the Vavke. If you ever notice, when you start davening in the morning, before Baruch She'omar, we say, L'shem, Yichud, Kutcho, Brichu, Shchintei. Right? That this is to unify the Kutcho, Brichu, B'Shchintei. Yad Hashem, Yudke, Bevavke. That we are to unify the letter Yudke with the letter Vavke, right? It's in our prayer book. We say it Shabbos morning, every morning. Right? Which is all to do, all the shikta that the God, God's name, by after the war of Amalek, which is the first of the enemies, and considered the worst because it was the first, created some type of breakaway in the level Yudke and Vavke. You couldn't get old on the Yudke, but the Vavke somehow it's now the job for us of returning it. Some of our sages tell us, what did, what did Yaakov do? He took away from the Leo which letter? Yeah. Love. Love. And how many times? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey times love. Yeah. Hey. Five. Yeah. Yeah. What is Yaakov doing? Is that, is that just taking a guarantor, stam, a letter? He's taking five times the letter of Vav, which is clearly emphasizing that I am going to ensure 
that you are remembering to bring us to that time when the Yudke and the Vavke are going to be reunited again. For that, I need to take the He, He times, the letter Vav, right? In order to ensure that you're going to bring the Gilula. When you are becoming responsible for something, remember which brother stood up in front of Yosef, not knowing that it's Yosef, and was ready to go to war? Yehuda. Yehuda. <laughs> what did Yehuda do? Why was it Yehuda, not anybody else? The okay. verse says, because he took responsibility for Binyamin. It's called Arvut. The same words that Rashi brings over here about Yaakov taking a little vav and he <coughs> keeps it as a guarantor, meaning it's not collateral. And when Eliyahu knows that his letter is being kept as a collateral in the hand of Yaakov, so like Yehuda fighting for Binyamin, he's fighting and he's making sure and begging by God to bring the Geulah, to bring the unification of Yudke and Vavke, and to make sure that even in the time of Golut, we are not lost. What? Yeah. Interesting is that you remember we spoke before Pesach about the four cups of wine, different ideas. And it all starts with the verse about the redemption. Go back to the verse a second, you're gonna find something interesting. How many expressions of redemption are there? Four. No? Four there's a fifth. Oh. Go to page three eighteen. Verse 6. And it starts by saying, Tell him I am Hashem. And he starts using the expressions of redemption. What's the first one? What is Veotseiti? I will take you out. Then Veitzalti etchem. And I will rescue you. Then number three. Ve ga'alti etchem, and I shall redeem you. The number four, ve lakachti etchem, and I shall take you. And if you go down to verse eight, ve veti etchem el aaret, I shall bring you to the land. We only drink four cups. Page three eighteen, three nineteen. We are drinking four cups because we are reflecting on the four expressions of the death. Yet we are filling up a fifth cup. For who? Eliyahu. Eliyahu and Avi. What is the fifth cup? The future redemption. I'm going to bring you to the land. Right? So, interesting. We have five expressions. <laughs> Ve'otseti, ve'itzalti, ve'gaalti, ve'lakachti, ve'eveti. How does each one of the expressions begin with which letter? Vav. Ah. Vav. Ve'otseti, ve'itzalti, ve'gaalti, ve'lakachti, ve'eveti. How many expressions are there? Five. Five. What do you have again? He times vav. The he and the vav are suddenly bechutonim again. Right? The he and the vav are becoming bechutonim again. <coughs> Just like Yaakov and Eliyahu. You want to see it all square? Oh, go to the story before by the spinning of the sea, page 374, verse 30. This is the story, the song of salvation. How does the song begin? On verse 30, Vayosha Hashem Bayom Ahum. We say it every morning by the evening, and Hashem saved, delivered us that day. So it starts, Vayosha Hashem Ayom Ozra Mitzrayim. Next paragraph, Vayar Yisrael at Mitzrayim. They saw them dead on the sea bank. Number three, Vayar Yisrael at Ayom Agdeilal. They saw again the great hand. Number four, Vayiru Amet Hashem and they feared God. Number five, Vayar Minu Bashem of Moshe Abdoi. So you see that the letter Vav keeps on coming around. 
five times, I'm sorry, six times, right? Vayoisha, Vayar, Vayar, Vayiru. Oh, but level, five times the level Vav. That's what I mean. The story is like this. When you read this passage of Zacharitim, Brisi Yaakov, you have to remember one thing. <coughs> Number one, like the Shiloh Akadi said, based on the fathers we had, we should have looked better. <laughs> right? The type of ancestors we all had, we should have looked better. But at the same time, but at the same time, you also have to remember what happened when God took a better figure. How did we look then? You know, imagine you want to marry your daughter off with someone, and they tell you, ooh, ah, this boy, a smart, rich family, they take care of me, all is good. <laughs> and you found out after that, a Baba Meister. No, <laughs> there's no money, there's no wisdom, going to be going. You're upset. And you have a right to be upset. <coughs> but what happens if you marry someone and you know from the get go, what you see is what you get? Then obviously, you can't get upset at me later, you know what you're getting. When God comes to us and complains, I want you to look as good as your parents. Okay, I understand. But when you said it the first time, that I remember your parents, you remember how they looked? How did they all look in Egypt? Nebuch. Real Nebuch cases, right? So we turn back to God and we say, you remember our parents, and I understand that you expect more, but from the get-go, when you took us because of me, that we are our parents' kid, you knew exactly what you're taking. The interesting thing is, God tells it to us. Look at the last verse of this parsha. How does the admonishment end? Verse 44, verse, we read, verse 45. <coughs> this is actually a word from the Blavi Yitzhak Abadicha. He says, I will remember for them the covenant with their ancestors. Who is the covenant with the ancestors mean? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? God says, I will remember for them the covenant who is for them. For those people now who have seen the messed up, or that's why they are in exile. Right? And I'm expecting them to look like their parents, and I'm upset. But nevertheless, I will remember for them the covenant of the ancestors, which ones? Not the Hebrew and Yitzhak and Yaakov. Asher Vitzay Siyo Yisro Meres Mitzrayim. Those who have been taken out of the land of Egypt. Why is it so important to remember them now? Why do you suddenly go back to the people who left Mitzrayim? And instead that you remember the Hebrew and Yitzhak and Yaakov. Why do you, why do you, what's going on? So oh, Tazei. Yeah. I took you the way you looked in Egypt. I took a Orime Mabel, I took a poor girl, and a Vietnamese Mabel, and a very bad looking girl, and I married her anyway. I know exactly what I'm taking. Why did I take you? Because she's not the seller of Rabbi Yitzchak and Yaakov. Ah, that's how you took us then. That's how you're going to take us now. That's the comfort, in this, that's the conclusion of all this in management. How am I going to make it go? Because you know exactly what you do. You understand exactly what you're dealing with. What can you expect from us? 2,000 years in exile, what can you expect from us? Be happy that we came Wednesday night, 7.30, to learn. <laughs> Be happy that we gave a few cupcakes to Tzedakah. Be happy that we still have us children who go to Jewish schools. Be happy that we still come to Davin. Be happy that we still eat kosher. Say thank you, Rabbi Nishlaylam. Why? Because you know who you took. And that's how we have to approach it. But at the same time, let's not take too much advantage of it. Let's remember that we have a God who loves us, who cares for us, 
Yaakov is holding on to the Vav. Arnold is holding on to the Vav. <laughs> and he's going to make sure that that Vav is kept until the Yahu Anavi comes. And he's calling for the redemption. Until then, the Yahu Anavi is walking around limping without a Vav. And Yaakov is walking around with five Vavs into his name five times. Okay. Just a, a short announcement. Those who can, God willing, next um, Tuesday, not Wednesday, Wednesday we have class. Tuesday night, we have the 